What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. Uh, Chase Games here, or whatever. Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, it's part three of my tier list video. And there's so much on here. Uh, I'm not going to reiterate things I said in part one and two. So watch them in order. I know it's a lot. But you guys know that I can't not be long-winded. Um, so here we go. Uh, yeah, let's go on. Uh, so we got, oh, this was what I wanted in there before. This was, a uh, Uber killing machine next to Uber killing machine. Uh, okay. Slime and tank. Okay. Um, I'm going to say net meh. I don't have this unit and I don't see it used much. I know it has utility. I think it does follow up attacks with a really good range. Um, but I, it's relatively old now. Um, and I, I think it's probably dated out. It's probably a good away, a good bit away from a blossom as well. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's worth an orb. Maybe if you got like a lot of copies of it somehow, it, it would go up. But I, I can't really tell you much about it. But I'm I'm, I'm fairly confident that it's meh. Uh, Gracos, you know what? Gracos, I'd say is worth an orb. Um, you might put him down in meh, but uh, he's got a uh, he's got a Typeless Breath Attack that can sleep things. Uh, he does some good crack spell damage. Um, he's got some MP regen. I know that I've used him on a couple of PvE stages and he's pretty good. So, I mean, he's far from the strongest. He's so far down on the list of units that you want to um, uh, be orbing. Um, but, yeah, uh, he, he's still really... He's pretty strong. Um, and he might not be too far away from a Blossom either because he came out right after the one year. Uh, Old King Mortimer... Um, this guy is worth an orb. I know when he came out, his damage was great. It's probably, like, only good now. But, yeah, he does crack and bang damage. Not really hard to find damage types right now. Especially with Zoma getting his blossom. I've always complained everything has bang spell damage. But he does a lot of damage. I think he starts with a reflect spell shield, too. I can't recall. I have him at 2 awaken, and I would love to orb this guy. But, like I said, I have most of these units. There's not that many units I don't have. Um, so he's still really far down the priority list, but if you have to, if you happen to get a few copies of this guy, uh, during the celebration as a new player, um, he's, you know, he's worth an orb if you've got him. Uh, Nimzo, uh, this guy is, uh, this, this guy's worth an orb, okay? Um, you'll see him used in a fair amount of PvE guides, which is important. Okay, you, you want to be able to follow guides. A lot of them need to be followed uh, to the T, okay? AI manipulation is a really, really big part of this. So, like, a unit moving left or going right or being after this unit instead of before it or whatnot is huge. So, um, thing about Nimza, I don't know how hard it is now. You have to go through some endgame content to get him. So, you're going to basically need a, a, a diverse box to get him. Um, and I, I don't think this guy is shattering anything when you get him, but because the fact that you can, once you are at the point where you can get him, you can probably max awaken him or get him to at least four hearts. Even a lot of the guides that use him only have him at four hearts because I don't think the fifth is that important. But, um, yeah, w when you can get a, a fully or, or four heart S rank, uh, easily or for free, you definitely want to orb it up. So that's where, uh, he is. Um, Schwartzel, this is... I would say Schwartzel is the second best um, arena token. This guy you'll see in some guides, but it's pretty rare. I might, like, once you max awaken him, he might be more tempting to orb based on your box. If you've got a bunch of unawakened or one awakened things and you need some crack physical damage, he might be good up there. You know, he, I think he's got some, some decent HP and whatnot, but... He's, he's very meh, so the, the only reason I would say he could be a higher priority on orbing is because you can uh, max awaken him, but it's going to take months, okay? Um, and you'll want to work on Helbert Saurus first. Uh, Gem Slime. This is the oldest unit not to be in the general pool now, I think. Uh, really needs a Blossom. I Somebody told me he's good in live PvP. Because he can uh, get rid of deb uh, status conditions uh, while healing, I believe. Um, 
if that turns out to be true, he'll move up a lot. Okay, a lot if you care about live PvP. Right now, before live PvP is a, is a thing, uh, barely, I think it starts in like two days, uh, you don't want to orb this guy. But, um, you know, that recommendation uh, could change. Um, okay, I'll include Sage right here uh, because... I mean, if you get her, I'm going to say that she's orb ASAP. I forget if she's on a battle road. That That's a really nice thing. Um, I think she's the worst of the three DQ3 units, but she's still amazing. So if you happen to get her with tickets or, or if you're going to whale out her or whatever, um, yeah, you, you definitely want to orb her. She's going to be ridiculous. But um, of the new units, she's probably the least uh, spectacular. But that's not saying much. I mean, she's still going to be absolutely busted uh vera just got added to the general pool she really needs a blossom um i don't think i can say that she's worth an orb but when she does she'll probably be amazing she does some good typeless martial damage i think she was a little bit overhyped when she came out um she has a perk that helps other martial units i think or that was mount uh Mar marquee i can't recall but um just being typeless damage kind of you're always you're always relevant, but the thing in this game is being pretty good is never is never enough. You know, you'd rather have five units that were tailor made for the stage than a unit that's pretty good everywhere. So, yeah. Um, let me see. I gotta start scrolling. Up. Uh, let me just get these things down in the bottom. Sorry. Yeah, I, I don't edit, guys. So whatever. Uh, okay. Did I, like, double everything? I think it's easier to just put the things that I... Sorry about that. Um, okay, so Zenlon. Zenlon is coming out uh, in about a week, almost two weeks. Uh, Zenlon's going to be absolutely busted. Um, there's some debate about who's better. I haven't seen what his numbers are like. He's going to do an insane amount of crack and frizz damage, breath damage at the same time. Breath is an amazing damage type right now. It can't crit, but it can't miss. Okay. Um... So, yeah, he, he's really good. He's going to have a 25% Dragon Breath leader skill. And he basically has a secondary leader skill as his base perk, okay? Anything that's around... Any uh, dragon that's around him is going to get a 15% uh, perk to their uh, their their Dragon Breath. Which I, uh, happens every third turn. I believe it'll stack. So if you keep the dragons next to him, on turn 3, they'll have a 30% buff. As well as his leader skill. He also uh, takes half off the first three hits, which, look, there are ways around it, but that's still a really strong survivability skill. So I think this guy is going to be absolutely busted. He's literally increasing the power of all dragons in the game. Dragon breath dragons. Um, so there you go. Um, all right. Uh, Maribel. Um, Maribel is meh. I think she can do some decent things. We all thought she was going to be broken because she was the first thing to have, um, uh, a spell that goes through bounce shields. Uh, but that ended up, bounce, the spell reflect shields ended up not being a big deal. 
uh, because we just all started using physical units and they were much, much better than spellcasters. Um, she's going to get a Blossom in JP next week, so for us, probably three months. Uh, she'll be a lot stronger then. I believe she'll have, she'll have an AoE spell that does uh, Frizz and Whoosh together, I believe, which will probably be really strong. Um, but I can't tell you too much. I think she's going to double dip on uh, uh, stacking spell uh, potency and wisdom. It's hard to tell from translations, but I think she'll be really strong when she blossoms, but it's too soon to tell. And uh, again, don't blossom, don't orb units because they're going to blossom later. Just wait until they actually blossom. Uh, save some orbs for them, sure, but don't spend them. Uh, Murdaw. I don't know how long Murdaw's banner is going to be up. But uh, Murdaw's awesome. I don't think he stands up with, um, you know, uh, Erdrick and Zenlon, but I mean, they also can't, you know, they also can't do an often uh, sleep, uh, sorry, uh, a six area wide spell with typhless spell damage that often puts units within it to sleep. So he's going to do major typhless spell damage in a three by two area uh, at range three, I believe. Um, and then he's going to, uh, there's a 60% chance to put him to sleep. I think it actually goes up to 70 with, if he gets multiple awakenings. But at Awaken 1, I think it's it's just 60% chance. Um, and then he has a single target Frizz spell, too, that hits three times, I think. I can't recall. No, twice. Dual Frizz. And that thing's damage is insane. I've actually heard he might be a good way to take out Erdrick. Um, okay, Forest Dragon. I don't know anything about forest dragon i think he might have auto selflessness or something he does breath bush damage i don't know how good it is i'm gonna put him at the bottom of worth an orb um but i i think he's probably meh i don't know anything about his blossom because there's just so many other things that want to blossom i've never liked forest dragon um i could be wrong um this guy uh dimension dragon got a a, a blossom not long ago and I don't know if he's necessarily top of this list. He's top of this list if you have Zenlon. If you have Zenlon, he, he's probably in must orb. Okay. Um, he does some really good breathless bang damage. Uh, some pretty relevant crack damages too. I think his crack damage is all physical or moderate breath. Moderate breath never does very much. But um, yeah, this guy is pretty decent. I believe he goes to move four. With this blossom, and he can also phase through objects, so he can move right through walls and whatnot. Um, so yeah, he's he's really strong. So especially if you have Zenlon. Um, Dual Magus. Dual Magus is a little bit dated, and he is still must orb uh, because he has full of. He's just like Fallen Angel Corvus. He does Typhlus Marshal instead of. Um, um, uh, physical damage, uh, although, uh, yeah, so Fallen Angel Corvus is better, but here's the thing about Duel. Um, I don't know where their damage lines up. I think Fallen Angel Corvus does more damage. Um, he also has sure, uh, access to the sure fire, uh, sure hit, um, uh, Sizz move. Duel Magus is only 50 points. He's also very agile. So, personally, I put things like Burning Breath on him, um, so that he can, anything that's weak to Paralyze, he can automatically do turn one. Uh, because you can stack agility on him and it will go before almost anything. So uh, he's a very useful unit. If you're going against a team with all or mostly physical and martial units, he's unhittable. And even if the team has one or two spell hit casters or breath users, if it's only one or two, you take those guys out first and then he has no threats. Okay. Um, God, I'm just talking. My, I'm so exhausted. I've um, <laughs> been talking for like an hour and a half now. Um, okay, uh, Gildaga. I think, I don't know whether to put him in ASAP or, or, like, this is not a guy that you want to be aiming for. There's really no reason for you to have him other than getting lucky with tickets. Uh, he's up till the 26th of September, 27th, rather. Um, he's a really good unit. Uh, I, he might be a counter to Zenlon, but he's not, he might not be fast enough for it. Uh, basically, if they put agility gear on Zenlon... Uh, he's going to outspeed your your Gildaga if you also put agility gear on him. Um, so Zenlon is a little bit faster naturally, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, he's still a really good unit. He can buff inorganics around him the same way Zenlon's going to, I believe. Um, 
but I don't, there's not a terrible amount of useful inorganic units. I mean, what do you got? I mean, you got killing machines. Yeah, he'll make killing machines a lot stronger. Um, but I don't think that that's really a thing in PvP. But, you know, I mean, it could surprise. Maybe for some GBG defense. You get Gildiga, use your Sagittar, use your, uh, your overkilling machine. You could, you could take people that I surprise. Maybe I shouldn't even be telling people that. Um, or Godemir. Uh, he's, he's totally mad right now. Okay. Um, and I'm not going to put him up here now, but he just got Blossom Ninja P, uh, JP. S try to keep him in mind, okay? He's going to be must orb after he blossoms, okay? Uh, th this video is too long. I'm, I'm not going to go into why. Uh, he's going to have... He, he already has a fan for his based attack. Um, so on top of that, it's going to... They're going to add a 40% chance to charm onto his AOE attacks. And he's also going to get Indomitable Spirit. On top of that... He already restores his HP to max the first time he drops below 20%. So now, okay, besides the fact that he's already got that, when he revives with Indomitable Spirit, it should, we haven't seen it yet, he's not actually out yet, that should put him back to 100% HP. Now, both of those things will be expended there one time only, but he's literally going to revive to full health the first time you knock him out, or the first time before. You know, if, if you drop him below 20%, he's going to heal the full and then he still has Indomitable Spirit active. They're going to call it something else because he's a Dark Lord type. But um, anyway, he's going to be really, really strong, I think. Uh, Marquis de Leon, he just got added. Um, I don't think he's even worth an orb anymore. He was pretty good when he came out. I think he was overhyped when he came out. He's going to uh, buff other Beast Marshal units, but that's pretty much just Vera. Uh, Vera, whatever. Um, I, I think it's only Beast Marshal units, so... Uh, again, it's mostly typeless. He has a physical zap attack, but there's much better options now. I think he heals himself to full, or like a large heal after he drops below 30%. He's not bad, but I gotta say, with, with the pool of units now, he's not there. Now, if you get him fully awakened, that math will probably change. Um, but that's gonna take a while. Uh, again, it's all RNG. Um, really good. He could get a Blossom anytime, though. So, he's got that going. Durin. Um... I mean, fight me, but if you happen to get Durin, I don't think you should be chasing Durin at all. He's definitely probably the worst banner unit out right now, but that's that's still amazing. He's a 50-point unit with Indomitable Spirit. Uh, he has a, a an attack that can heal himself, and he's got a pretty strong physical Zam attack as well that hits three things, uh, up to three things. You know, it's, uh, I think it's range two, hits uh, three tiles. Um... I think he's really strong, but, you know. So if you happen to get him with tickets, especially with an Awakening, he's a demon type. So if you get him, uh, you I don't know how many demon fragments are in old things, but you could potentially buy an Awakening for him. I, I think that's probably really hard for a new player, though. Um, by the time you actually get 100 demon fragments naturally, uh, he's not going to be <laughs> special, but... Uh, if, if, if somehow you got, you're got you able to get this guy awakened, he's probably a must orb. I think he's probably going to be a pretty strong 50-point unit. Ruff. Um, Ruff I'm going to put in meh. I think his damage is probably still really good, but he is really, really fragile. He also just got blossomed. He's one of the DQ7 units. Um, and he's going to do some really good damage. Um, they didn't do much for his survivability. Uh, but he, he, he's going to get, uh, he's going to do a lot more damage. So, um, keep an eye on him. Uh, DKO, oh my god. No, he's crap. Dra Dra Demon King or Godemir from DQ7. He did not get a Blossom. Um, do not. I'm so upset that I put mine at S5 because I had an extra orb for a while and he was the best of the worst in my box. And then, uh, after that I got a bunch of new units and it's... I hate that I put an orb into him already. Uh, Jessica. Um, Jessica's probably the like the bottom of most... Okay. I, I'm actually going to put Jessica on orb ASAP. Because... Okay, because for new players, she is not a must orb. Uh, for new players, she is an orb when you get around to it. Because she's going to help you a lot on uh, Blossom Doors and some of the harder pre PvE stages. But she's not like a one-unit solution to these stages. She is part of a team. So you're still going to need a diverse box 
to be able to utilize Jessica. So new players, Jessica's not that exciting, but she's really good to have. And her first awakening is MP regen. Some strategies are going to absolutely require her to have MP regen from her first awakening. A lot of strategies are not. So um, even if you don't have her awakened, she's one of the few units that can get away without an awakening, although she will often need it. I'm going to allow the bottom of the list to get cut off. Sorry, guys. I have to scroll now. Uh, Jamiris. Jamiris just came out. This is, again, this is not a unit to chase. Um, I'm not excited. Well, okay. But the Whoosh Breath is good right now. I've heard that he's very, very strong. He can give Whoosh Force to other things, so he can buff Whoosh Damage and uh, reduce incoming Whoosh Damage to things that he applies the Whoosh Force to on turn one. I think it's just turn one. Maybe it's every odd turn. Um, his real... The thing that makes him broken, uh, apparently, is that he can raise agility for everything around him. So if you hang back the first turn, your units that went second uh, in the, on the first turn can go first on the second. So you can still end up basically having a Blitzkrieg action. Um, I haven't used it myself. I still think that you want to aim for things like Erdrick and Zenmon. And I don't suggest doing normal banners other than these literally unbalanced units like Erdrick and Zenmon. Um, and that's up to you too. I mean, they put out a lot of value banners. Like it's very hard to, if you chase any amount of single banners, like any amount of normal banners, you're not going to be able to afford all of the value banners and the value banners are, they're literally getting better and better. Uh, I like, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Jamiris is really, really strong. You'll want to orb him ASAP if you get him through tickets. I don't think I can tell you to, to spend uh, uh, gems on him. Although, honestly, he, that could be a mistake to say. He could be he could be one of the, the most important units in the game, but, you know, he'll be on the value banners in three to, three to five months. So, I say three to five because I think we're going to have an anniversary before six months, but I could be wrong. This guy, this is the first... Um, uh, uh, arena token unit to uh, be put in the game and I think he's still the best. He also got a Blossom. Even without his Blossom, he's still the best unit. You'll see him used in a lot of guides. He's fairly defensive. He has an attack that lowers attack. He's got decent AoE Sizz Breath. Uh, so he got a Blossom. His, his new Blossom skill is Sizz Physical. Um, but his, his old breath attack is still getting buffed. It's not huge, but, um, he is still going to get buffed up by, uh, Zenlon a bit, but I would rather have, uh, Dread Dragon blossomed rather than Helvertsaurus. But, uh, that said, he's still, you know, as far as, um, the arena units, you're going to want to do him first. And, uh, I don't know what track I'm playing now, but. Uh, I'm just going to stick with the same one. Anyway, um, yeah, Halberd Taurus is still worth being the first one that you take to, like, Awakening 4 or 5 with your Arena Coins. Um, and he's probably worth an orb, too. But he's still really far down the, on the list for orbing. Nocturnus. If you have him awakened, I'm going to say Nocturnus is still a must-orb. This guy is still freaking amazing. Uh, also, you know, somebody somebody had to, like, spell this out for me. Uh, Jamiris increases his usability too. Um, but that, you know, that little thing only matters that even without Jamiris though, in PVE, this guy's still amazing. Did I put him on here? So, you know, this guy is going to do amazing typhless damage. He's still really strong. He's buffing his own attack. You know, this is another unit that's absolutely busted when you're using young Terry because he's boosting his attack. I think his attack boost is every turn. So after three attack or three turns, he's got a triple attack stack, um, and maybe def triple attack, triple agility. I can't remember defense. Um, you know he's going to do some huge damage because he's going to have that triple strength. He's going to have that triple uh, uh, damage uh, boost. You know, just generic damage boost. Uh, he's just going to be insane, young know, young Terry. Even without the buffing, he's still just ridiculous. So um, and st some strong wish physical too. Good AoE. You're going to use him for a lot of things in PvE. You know, this guy is a year old uh, on the JP timeline uh, from where we are. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, just consider this guy a year old. Um, but he's still amazing. 
He might be towards the bottom of this must orb list, but um, do not sleep on Nocturnus. He is still awesome. Uh, this, this is uh, sorry, this is the second or third, but I forget about this guy. Uh, he's meh. Okay, it's some strong single target frizz damage that can occasionally lower defense. So that's not going to help him because he's doing spell, but it can help your other units. Uh, it's a fairly strong single target hit, although I think it's fairly outclassed now. You know, the strength is that this is an S rank that you can get fully awakened, uh, free to play. Um, but there's, it's going to take you ages to get there because you, you would rather do Halberd Saurus first, maybe even Schwartzold first. Uh, so this guy, God, you're just never going to orbit really. Um, let's see. Is that, oh, a uh, CGM, um, I think CGM is still up. CGM is also amazing. A really strong single target Sizz Breath. Not a dragon. This is a Dark Lord, so not going to work with uh, Zenlon. Although it does still have a good leader skill. His leader skill is 20% uh, damage increase for all breath damage. Not just dragon breath. So this is going to work not only on himself. This is going to work on... Um, besides, it will still work on dragons. It's going to work on Dragon Lord True Form who is not a dragon, it's a Dark Lord. Uh, it's going to work on Baramos. Um, and other things. Anyway. Am I... Oh my god, am I done? I, I'm like... Oh my god. Oh, uh, this guy. Uh, this is from DQ6. DQ7. No, DQ6. This guy is in DQ6, so you can't get him. Uh, DQ6 isn't going to take terribly long to get to Reminiscence, so... Yeah, you'll get him. You'll get him in four or five months. This is, a, this is a little bit exhausting. This is talking straight for over an hour and a half now. Just want to make sure. Uh, there, I think I included everything. I don't think I missed any images. So there you go, guys. Uh, I left Ramia off this list. There's a there's an S rank that comes out in a week and a half. I don't know anything about it. It's probably good. It's probably a. It's probably. I, I, I don't know if it's going to be as good as Robin Odlum. It's probably a must orb just for the same reasons as Robin Odlum. But I'm not going to comment on it because I don't know anything about it. But, um, okay. Anyways, if you guys watch this, thank you. If you're a new player, the best advice I can give you is honestly join my Discord and ask your stupid new player questions in there. Um, you can ask me in the comments too. Um, but honestly, so, sometimes, you know... I get tired of answering the same questions there, I'll be honest. Come and answer those same tired questions in the Discord. There's dozens of people that'll answer them for you there. Um, uh, my Patreon, once again, well, uh, thank you, Brandon, Adam, and I don't want to put last names out here. Um, what is it? Uh, yeah, Brandon, Adam, and Nick, and Retro Revolutions. Okay, I they've told me their usernames and I forgot, sorry. Um, I know what they are, but I, I don't want to tell people what their names are. So, um, thank you to my patrons, and if you want to help support the channel and get more content and whatnot, maybe better content, maybe it'll be less low effort, not likely, um, patreon.com slash chase games. Link is always in the description, usually in the description. Once again, thank you guys, and uh, hopefully this helps some of you. Good luck.